work out. And South Mumbai basically was a problem because South Mumbai place is extremely expensive, real estate is expensive. In fact, the suburbs have got so many good gyms. And South Mumbai, which is considered to be a, a great area to live in Mumbai, does not have that many gyms. Proximity of gyms, frequency of gyms is less. Because, and so finally a good big gym uh, that South Mumbai deserved for a long time is here. And uh, plus, as you can see, educational initiatives have been taken. People spend money on the gym, and a lot of money has been spent in making this gym also. You can easily see the investment. But at the same time, if, if uh, Pramod Daukare, who is the owner, has called me here for a seminar for members, <coughs> that means this gym is interested in awareness, in education. Uh, it, it takes uh, uh, trainers who are certified. In fact, uh, Mr. Pramod Daukare has actually asked me to do an evaluation of the trainers here. So obviously he's a gym owner who is interested in giving quality, not in terms only of infrastructure and facility, but also in terms of knowledgeable staff. So, great thing. I am very optimistic that this gym will do well and the members will see results because this gym will follow science and will teach proper scientific uh, workouts and uh, dietary uh, recommendations will be given to the, uh, the members and hence the members will see results. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good so, is there anybody here who is not really interested in fat loss? <laughs> And I'll probably end up contradicting everything that you all thought of as the right thing to do. Okay? One thing that I want to tell you all is that everything that I'm contradicting today, and yes, it is going to be a big contradiction. This is what people uh, believe, this is what nutritionists have told you, and it's wrong. And this theme is going to continue throughout the seminar. But let me be the first one to tell you that everything that I'm contradicting today is something that I've taught yesterday. Let me repeat, whatever I contradict today, whatever I tell you is wrong, is something that I believed was right a few years back. Okay? Uh, I, if somebody asks me who am I as a person, I'd like to say I'm a teacher. I've always been one. I believe that it's extremely important for a teacher to take a U-turn to say that I was wrong the moment the teacher realizes that he's been on the wrong track. I also want to tell you that uh, I do consider myself to be an expert in my field. And basically when I say my field, I also want to tell you anybody who says this is my field is actually saying that he's an expert in that field. Because you're saying it's your field, right? So if it's my field, so I'm, there's nothing big about the fact that I'm an expert because this is my field and I should have it inside out. <coughs> has science answered everything that has to be answered? No, there will always be questions, there will always be gray areas. But there are certain things that are absolutes, okay? But which we call as pure science. Pure science deals with facts. Once I start the seminar, I'm going to basically tell you all about science first. What does science really mean? It's all very good to keep on using these words. Let's be scientific. We should have a, this is a scientific part. But what exactly science needs to be defined? Because once you understand that, you will realize that everything scientific something, everything that is said by science is not true. Just like anything else in life, with anything else in life, there is good science and bad science. There was a time a long time back when I used to be a blind follower of science. Now that itself is an oxymoron. How can I be a blind follower? Science itself tells you how to follow things blindly. And I've been a blind follower of science. That means if it's written in a textbook, plus that's it. It is correct. Why is it correct? Because it is written in a textbook. That's why it's correct. So that's being a blind follower of science. And then I suddenly realized over a period of time, because everybody, all of us, we evolve in our own fields. And as I evolved, I was introduced to a body of knowledge, luckily for me, that actually showed me how science can be flawed. How there is such a thing called a bad scientist. And unfortunately for us, see, a, a bad architect, let's assume, bad architect, should be an architect who doesn't get a lot of work because he's bad. 
So a bad architect is also an unsuccessful architect. A bad hairdresser, who's also getting his hair, right? Will also be an unsuccessful hairdresser. Because one hair one hair will screw up, second hair will screw up. How many will screw up? So when I see a bad scientist, I would assume that that scientist is not prominent. But unfortunately, what's happened in science, and especially what's happened in nutritional science, okay, is that the bad scientists were also extremely prominent and powerful. So if I start off the seminar by saying, this is the way to eat, this is what you cause fat loss, this is the causation, this is the pathway, you are not going to believe it. I have to present my case almost like a lawyer to you. I have to actually prove that what I am saying is right. The onus is on me for, your, for making your belief. And I want to make your belief only on facts. Everything that I will tell you right now can be verified. Okay? And hence, do your due diligence afterwards and verify everything that I have said. Question me all you want. Nod your head only if you are in agreement with what I am saying. One thing is for sure, when you go on this genuine scientific pathway, the results are a given. You have to experience them. The correct way is also the shortest way. Many people say, go, go on the right way. Have patience. Don't be in a hurry. Okay? In fact, I would tell you, please be in a hurry. Be extremely impatient. You should be impatient to get into shape. You should be impatient to become stronger, have more endurance. Why do you want to wait? And the quickest way will always be a scientifically proven way. It works like magic, but it's not magic. It is basically working like magic because we've not been actually applying science. Do you all, as health conscious people, do you all stay away from butter? Yes. What if I tell you eat? Yeah, so no is about aware people who've, who have read up on a few things here and there. But you are still, uh, I would say, subject to being influenced the other way. For people who already know that butter is your friend, right? For people who already know, I want to turn that into a certainty today. If you believe that, I want to tell you why you should believe it. Okay, we, just knowing the right path is not enough. Because when you know the right path, you can easily dislodge that path also. But if you know why it is right, nobody can dislodge it. Uh, I am in the fitness field, right? So, unfortunately for me, this field is a bit tricky. Because the influencers of this field are people who are extremely fit. And being extremely fit, first and foremost, starts off with your genetic makeup. And there are some people who are extremely fit genetically. Just people, just just as some people have have extremely lustrous hair genetically. See, a woman with beautiful lustrous shining hair becomes a brand ambassador for a particular shampoo. She may or may not use it, but you use the same shampoo. <laughs> or the first question that you will ask a woman who's got extremely lustrous hair. What do you do with your head? And then everything that comes out of your mouth will be accepted by you. Whether it's cracking eggs on your hair, whether it's pouring beer on your hair, whether it's applying some vegetables and crushing them, whatever she may say, is taken at face value. A person who is exhibiting the so called six pack, which actually is directors and dollars. So as I'm still waiting, uh, for people to join us. Do you know that there is no such thing as a six pack? Huh? In the human body. And you know where you know where the uh, six pack terminology came from? Yeah, six pack is originally before the fitness revolution, a six pack meant a six pack of beer. Beer cans. Beer cans were sold in packs of six. I mean, you take the beer can and you turn it like this. You see a familiar shape. You see a center line delineated, and you see horizontal transcriptions like this. Right? Six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
the way the frontal abdominal wall of a human being looks like when it is developed and when there is no fat between the skin and the muscle. Hence it is called as the six pack. Actors, <coughs> celebrities, they also become knowledge givers of fitness. The biggest celebrity in India is always a Bollywood actor. <coughs> Though an athlete can be a celebrity, celebrity means various things. Okay? But generally, when we say a celebrity, we are talking about an actor or an actress. So, when we talk about an actor or an actress, it is their professional requirement to be in shape right now. But we also assume that they are authorities on fitness. One thing that I want you to understand is specialization. What kind of tips should you take from an actor? Acting tips. <coughs> what kind of tips do you take from a Formula One driver? Driving tips. But we take fitness tips from everyone. And especially the people who are in shape. Any expert, any celebrity, any person with an influence should tell you, don't do as I do, do as I tell you. And it would be great if the celebrity is also practicing what he teaches and hence he will be doing what he tells other people also. But many celebrities actually want you to do what they do. And they don't realize that they've been lucky. One more thing that's going to be a very striking feature of today's talk is going to be sugar. Okay? And uh, how many people afflicted with diabetes, pre-diabetic are there in this room? It's fine if you don't want to divulge. Okay, but I'll tell you one thing that in any room that I go to, diabetes will be prevalent whether it's 50 people, 100 people, 500 people. One out of three Indians is a diabetic. There's a reason for that. And the reason why in fact was that I'm talking about diabetes is because fat gain and diabetes are linked together. The diet to follow to lose fat is also the greatest combatant against diabetes. There is no separate diet. If you tell me that this person wants to use flat, please prescribe a diet, I'll prescribe a diet. If you tell me this person is a diabetic, please prescribe a diet, I'll be just prescribing the same diet. What makes you gain fat and what gives you diabetes is the same thing. Sugar makes you gain fat. Dietary fat is very different from body fat. Dietary fat is not body fat. Dietary fat does not make you fat, but it's such a difficult concept to digest because word association. In a grocery aisle, in a supermarket aisle, you'll be seeing fat free, fat free, fat free, fat free. Okay, low fat, low fat, low fat. Now you want to be low fat. You want to be low in fat. You want to be fat free and then you pick up an object that says fat free. Sugar free has a huge significance. Fat free has no relevance to losing your fat and in fact fat free is against health. Difficult concepts again. And how did it become so difficult to believe this? Because it is completely and totally a scientific fact that all the things that we consider as against our health as things that make us gain weight have never made us gain weight. So today you all will learn to use copious quantities of ghee in your food. Today you all will learn to chuck oils out, vegetable oils. Today you all will learn that coconut oil is needs to be ingested and not put on your hair. Today I'll talk about marketing because believe it or not, your education is happening through marketing. And what you end up believing is the truth is called as conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom is what all everybody believes to be true. That a person who is health conscious wants to have a glass of fruit juice in terms of health and how that's the worst thing a person can do. I'm here to tell you that eating apples is not healthy. That's sacrilege. 
how can I tell you to stop eating apples? How can I tell you actually eating apples is against health? So I'm rattling this off because these are things that I want you to first in your mind say, reduce, punish. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. That is what we've been told all along. And I have my own little joke which I keep repeating in all my circles that the only way you can keep a doctor away with apples is if you throw the apples at his head. Then you can keep the doctor away. Strike it down, you won't come. How did we get so wrong in what is correct and what is wrong? How many things become so completely perverse, especially in the field of nutrition science? There are certain people that I consider as my gurus, my, my teachers. I've not even met them. I know them through their books. As a parting gift at the end of the seminar, I'm going to give you a list of books which I want you to read. Important. Okay? There are some doctors. Now, by the way, you lose fat by working out and nutrition. You gain muscle by working out.